Hi, this is Anthony. Welcome back to my show. Many of my longtime viewers found me because of the D.B. Cooper videos that I've done. I've also done a couple touching upon Jack the Ripper and maybe a few talking about the Zodiac Killer and the Black Dahlia case. However, other things in life have kept me busy for a while. Plus, I don't want to make videos just for the sake of uploading videos if I have nothing relevant to say. However, I really do enjoy the interaction that I have with my viewers and I love to hear their comments. Often they have things that I have didn't know about and even if they just disagree with me I think that a respectful analytical disagreement could be healthy when trying to find the truth in these cases. In most cases I don't have a suspect that I think definitely was the perpetrator although I think some suspects are often stronger than others and some suspects definitely were not the perps. And I think in many cases just like what we've seen in many real life cases today that are being solved through DNA Often the perpetrator was somebody who was not necessarily on the radar of the investigators. Anyway, I found a reason to upload a new video, and that's what today is. But before I do that, and I promise I'll get to it very quickly, I just wanted to give a shout out to two people who have channels that I watch religiously and which touch upon a lot of the same subjects that I'm interested in. The first one is Drew Beeson, super nice guy. He gives me shout outs during his live shows if I comment. He covers a lot of these cases in depth and has written some books on them. He and I don't necessarily agree on every conclusion, but he's still a great guy and very thought provoking. So please do check out and subscribe to his channel. The next channel that I want to give a shout out to is Black Box Online Radio by Ned DeHaan. Despite its name, it's a YouTube channel. Covers a lot of these interesting cases like Zodiac and Jack the Ripper. Again, check out his channel and subscribe to it. The first few moments of his video's introductions may sound a little weird. Don't let that turn you off. He has a lot of great information and he does some very interesting interviews with other experts in the field. And speaking of subscribing, I would really appreciate it if you hit that subscribe button if you haven't already subscribed to my channel. I currently have enough watch hours, but I still need slightly over 200 more subscribers before I can get my channel monetized. And maybe this week and I'll even surpass the 800 subscriber mark. Anyway, let's jump into today's short video about some thoughts I have concerning one of the Zodiac's codes. Now, I'm not going to go over the case or talk about the codes much because if you're watching this you probably already know more about it than I do or you can find plenty of information about it on the Wikipedia page. But one thing that stood out is the so-called Halloween card. And while some communications from the Zodiac seem definitely to be authentic since some of them were accompanied by pieces of one of the victim's bloody shirts, the Halloween card is one that I think we need to be a little suspect with but many researchers believe that it authentically came from the killer. And one note about information that serial killers put in authentic communications to the police or the media. Just because communication is authentically from the killer doesn't mean that everything in the communication is truthful or accurate. Salting communication with some accurate information or providing evidence connected to the crime, such as a swatch of bloody shirt, could help convince the investigators that the communication is authentic, but then the killer can then put in misleading information that will point away from them as far as their identity or just lead the police on a wild goose chase. So we always need to be careful when we're looking at the Zodiac's codes and other communications, even if it is authentically from the killer. There still could be all kinds of information in it just to waste people's time and point away from him. So be aware of that. Now, what I wanted to talk about was the symbol at the bottom of the so-called Zodiac Halloween card. If you look at it, it has three symbols. In the middle, one is a Z. The last one is a circle with the cross through it, which has been associated with this killer. But the first one is a bit more mysterious. It looks like it could be a valley between two mountains and has four dots. Certainly, it could be a pictorial representation of something in a valley between a low altitude mountain and a higher altitude mountain. Or it could be, and this isn't my own interpretation, but other people's, that it could be a cattle brand. And it certainly could be a cattle brand, although spending quite a bit of time online looking through different resources that contain a list of cattle brands, I could not find any that were similar to this one. That doesn't mean that it isn't an accurate representation of an authentic cattle brand, but unless one is found, I don't think that that's the case here. And certainly, 
It could be that it's just a random symbol made up by the Zodiac to throw people off and have people spend the next 50 odd years debating the meaning of it. But to me, parts of the mountain did look like symbols that I've seen on weather maps. So here I'm going to show some weather map keys that I found from the internet. These deal with the direction and intensity of wind in knots. So if you had anything to do with weather or using weather chart symbols, even if it is then translated into something else, it might indicate northwest 10 knots and northeast 15 knots. Again, I know nothing more about the weather than the average person on the street, so I can't interpret this any more than I've done here. I don't know what the four dots might mean. I could be completely wrong on all of this. It could be a representation of a valley. It could be a representation of an unknown cattle brand. It could be just a random doodle made up to confuse people. But for the serious investigators of the Zodiac case, this might be one clue that if you have any contacts with people that know anything about the weather, particularly people that might have had experience in the military with meteorological forecasting, they might be able to shine some further understanding on this clue, if it is perhaps some type of standard weather symbol usage. Also, I've gone online looking at resources with so-called hobo symbols as well as Boy Scout symbols. I could find nothing from various sources replicating symbols associated with these groups that looked anything like the symbol displayed here. Just thought I would throw that out so that people know that I've investigated that potential. Okay, that's all I wanted to say for today in this video. Again, I would love to hear from my viewers on your thoughts about this and any other videos that I've done. I do eventually read the comments, and often I will include people's comments in future videos, answering them specifically if I think that the question and answer might be relevant to other people interested in the topic. Be sure to check out those other two YouTube channels that I mentioned at the beginning of this video, and do please hit that subscribe button for mine if you haven't already. Let's try to get my viewer account up past 800 by the end of this coming weekend. Thank you so much for watching. Hope to hear from you soon.